When we last took a look at the atomic theory, we saw John Dalton. And John Dalton said, yeah, there's these things called atoms. And there are different atoms for different elements, and they all have different masses. But he didn't say anything about things called subatomic particles. So he didn't know that the atom is made up of smaller parts. About 100 years later, J.J. Thompson comes along, and he uses a device called, called a cathode ray tube to make some discoveries about the atom. Let's take a look at what this is. Okay, this is a cathode ray tube. What it essentially is, it's a vacuum chamber. There are no gases inside this glass tube. Uh, the only thing we have are two electrodes, one's called the cathode, the other's called the anode, and a fluorescent screen um, in the background. It's coated with some type of fluorescent material. When I turn the power supply on, we'll see a beam that, is, that causes that fluorescent screen to glow. Looks like a nice straight line, doesn't it? We call that a cathode ray because it emanates or begins at the cathode and shoots across over to the anode. J.J. Thompson was working with cathode rays. We really didn't understand what they were. I mean, we have electricity going in one side and coming out the other, but there's nothing inside to conduct it. It's a vacuum tube. So he decided to apply a magnetic field um, to this cathode ray, and he found something interesting. Let me apply one pole of the magnet to this beam and we'll see what it does and then we'll flip it around and see what the other pole does. This is my favorite part. Can you see what's happening to that beam? What does it appear as though it's happening to it? It's moving. It's moving. It's being repelled, isn't it, by the magnet. Let me flip the magnet around and what do you think is going to happen this time? Well, if it's being attracted on one pole, See how it's being attracted there? Let me rotate it so the kids on the, this side of the room can see it. See how it's being attracted there? And then the other pole, do you see how it's being pushed down? What does that tell me about that beam? It's it has a what? It's a it has a charge. Let me tell you about the poles of the magnet. The one that pushes it away is the negative pole. So what does that tell you about the charge of those particles? Negative. Negatively charged particles. And J.J. Thompson was actually able uh, to do a charge uh, to mass ratio of these particles. And he found that these particles were about 2,000 times lighter than a hydrogen atom. Now at the time that was very profound. What did Dalton say? Are there any particles smaller than an atom? J.J. Uh, Thompson just found something 2,000 times smaller than a hydrogen atom. Why is the hydrogen atom and something 2,000 times smaller than it so profound? It's hydrogen. Because hydrogen is the smallest atom, isn't it? So if we found something 2,000 times smaller, we have found our first subatomic particle. And it's called the <laughs> electron. <laughs> All right, so let's review. Thompson was kind of messing around with this device called a cathode ray tube. And scientists didn't really know what to make of a cathode ray tube or what it was. Because you have to understand, electricity had kind of just been discovered. So cathode ray tube had this um, beam that was going through it. And when Thompson took a magnet and applied it to the beam, he noticed that the beam was deflected. The beam was always deflected towards the positive side and away from the negative side of a magnet. Well, that told him that the beam was negatively charged because he knows that opposites attract. He goes on to do some more testing on this beam and finds the particles of the beam are 2,000 times lighter in mass than that of a hydrogen atom, which, as we heard, yes, that is very profound because now we found something that is not only smaller than the smallest atom, it's 2,000 times smaller than the smallest atom. So this is what Thompson came up with. He said, I think the atom is made of mostly positive material and scattered throughout the inside and the outside are these negatively charged particles at the time that he called corpuscles. He said that these negatives and the positives 
would cancel one another out to make the atom overall neutrally charged. Now, we know today that we no longer call them corpuscles. Corpuscles, these are called electrons. Thomson discovered the first subatomic particle, the electrons. 